a, this is the first time this flag has ever been uh, on display anywhere. Uh, he had the thing mounted on here, but it was all rolled up into a bag and, and you know, put in a closet somewhere they had in their family all these years. And, uh, huh? Yeah, well, those are, these are all bullet holes. And and this is the big holes are um, uh, crates and canisters. Mm -hmm. It's like a giant shotgun fired from a cannon. And there's a there's a description of this flag in battle here. It uh, it talks about it right here. And uh, it says uh, and, and the early on the morning of June third at daylight, the signal gun for the charge was given, and our brigade advanced to charge the rebel breastworks nearly three quarters of a mile distance. At the command, our regiment marched over our earthworks, formed in a line of battle and moved toward the rebel works. Instantly, the work of death commenced. The artillery incessantly thundered from rebel and Union guns. Shells screamed through the air, bursting over our heads, while the rattle of musketry was terrible. Through this storm of laden rain, our regiment advanced under command of Colonel Porter, the right battalion in command of Major Willett, and the left under command of Lieutenant Colonel Bates, the center under Major Spaulding. The right and center battalions advanced over an open field which was under fire of the rebel sharpshooters and cannons. On they moved until within a few rods of the rebel works. When passing some obstacle, the right battalion became separated. Major Willard attempted to close the ranks, drew his revolver, and was about to give the command to fire when a ball struck him in the shoulder, passing out I believe, above the lung, just grazing the juggler vein. On still, on faltering, the battalion passed until within four rods of the rebel breastworks, when a terrible infielding fire of grape and canister swept along the line. Here I might stop and leave you to imagine the results, Would that it were no worse than imagination. But the reality exceeds imagination. The line melted away fell as grass before the reaper, only swifter. One after another went down beneath the storm of iron and lead which swept the plain. As the ranks thinned, they closed up sternly. With arms at a trail and bayonets fixed, they pressed forward on a run without firing a shot. Down went the colors, the staff splintered and broken, as well as the hand that held it. Brave hands seized them again and bore them onward until the enemy works were close at hand. Colonel Porter fell, crying, Close in on the colors, boys. The rebels were pouring in double charges of grape and canister at less than point-blank range, sweeping away a score every moment. The line lost its momentum, stopped from sheer exhaustion within a stone's throw of the enemy's works. <laughs>